I'm going to be looking at examples of stem level problems. These are ordinary second order differential equation problems where two boundary conditions are specified but there is no unique solution. They take the form ly equals d by dx of p of x times dy by dx plus q of x times y plus lambda wx again times y and these will equal zero. They will be satisfied on a set, for example a is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to b and will be subject to boundary conditions which will take the form something like r naught y of a plus r1 y prime of a equals zero and s naught y of b plus s1 y prime of b equals zero. And as you can see, the a and b from the range also appear in the boundary conditions. So stern removal problems always have the trivial solution, which is when y of x equals zero, but normally this is ignored. So looking at the example of finding the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of y second derivative minus y first derivative plus lambda times y equals zero, with the conditions y of zero equals zero, which also equals y of l, where l is just a constant value. The first thing we need to do is look at the auxiliary equation, which is r squared minus r plus lambda equals zero. And as you can see, the coefficients match up between this equation here and this, the auxiliary equation. So using the quadratic equation, we can see that the auxiliary equation has the roots for r, r equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 lambda all over 2. The solutions we get are going to be dependent on whether the 1 minus 4 lambda it equals 0 or is positive or negative, and we've got to consider all of these independently. So the first one we're going to consider is when 1 minus 4 lambda equals 0, which will then give us the r values r equals 1 plus or minus 0 all over 2, which equals a half. And this is a repeated root. So, just turn the paper over. This means we would get y equals c1 e to half x plus c2 times x times e to half x, as this is the general solution for a repeated root. So we know that y of 0 equals 0, and we can see from putting 0 in in place of the x's in this equation that y of 0 also equals c1 e to the 0 plus c2 times 0 times e to the 0. And then this means that we end up with c1 equals zero. And then with the other boundary condition, which is y of l equals c2 l e to the half l, because we already know that c1 equals zero, so you can ignore the first term. We then get that l e to a half l is not equal to zero, because it can never can be, because if you think about the graph of the exponential, it doesn't equal zero. So we then know that c2 must equal zero. And then in this case, only the trivial solution, which is y of x equals zero, will exist. So this is ignored. So let's move on to the case where 1 minus 4 lambda is greater than zero. So we will get, in this case, we will get real roots from the auxiliary equation of r equals 1 plus the square root of 1 minus 4 lambda all over 2 and r equals 1 minus the square root of 1 minus 4 lambda 
again all over too. So from this we get the solution y equals c1 e to the power of 1 minus 1 plus sorry 1 minus 4 lambda all over 2 x plus c2 e to the power of 1 plus 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4 lambda times l in this case all over 2. So we get the solution y equals c1 e to the power of 1 plus the square root of 1 minus 4 lambda all over 2 x plus c2 um, times e to the power of 1 minus the square root of 1 minus 4 lambda all over 2 again times x. And with y0 putting into this we get that this equals c1 plus c2 because in both cases e to the power of naught is just equal to 1. So we know that c1 equals minus c2. Then if we put in the second condition, which is using L, so y of L equals c1 e of 1 plus square root of 1 minus 4 lambda all over 2L plus C2 e to the 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4 lambda all over 2 times L and this then gets inputting the condition dependent on C1 and C2 that you can have C1 equals E So C1 times by e to the power of 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 4 lambda all over 2L minus e 1 minus the square root of 1 minus 4 lambda over 2L equals 0. Since the bit inside the brackets does not equal 0, as the two terms are not equal to each other because this term here 1 minus 4 lambda is not equal to 0 we know that c1 equals 0 this then means that c2 equals 0 which again just gives us the trivial solution y equals 0 so again this is ignored Finally, we need to consider the case where 1 minus 4 lambda is less than 0. This is going to give us the complex roots to the auxiliary equation, which are r equals a half plus or minus i multiplied by square root of 4 lambda minus 1 all over 2. And this is changed just because you take a factor of minus 1 out at this point. So this gives the solution y equals c1 multiplied by e to a half x multiplied by sine of the square root of 4 lambda minus 1 all over 2x plus c2 times e to the half x cos times square root of 4 lambda minus 1 all over 2 times x and you can see that this half would be the real value in the solution and that these two values here are simply this value here. So this will then give us y of 0 equals c2 which equals 0 because sine of 0 is 0 and sine of 1 and um, sine and um, cos of 0 even is 1. So that will then give us the second solution L of y equals c1 e half L times sine 
of 4 lambda minus 1 all over 2 times L equals 0 again because we know that dc2 equals 0 so this term here is ignored in this case In order for this to not give a trivial solution, and at this point we can assume that it won't, because otherwise you would just get three trivial solutions, we need to assume that y1 is not equal to zero. So this means that sine of the square root of 4 lambda minus 1 all over 2 times by L equals zero. And we know that sine equals zero only when it is of a multiple of pi, so we know that sine of n pi equals zero where n is just an integer. This means that we know that this bit here inside the bracket, so the square root of 4 lambda minus 1 over 2 times L must equal a multiple of pi. Since uh, 1 minus 4 lambda is less than 0, we know that n must be greater than 0, which gives us lambda n must be greater than 0 which will give us a value of lambda n equals 2 n pi squared plus l squared all over 4 l squared, which will give us the lambda value that satisfies the equation. So we know that the eigenfunction corresponding to lambda n is e to the power of a half x sine n pi over l x and this gives solutions to the original equation with the eigenvalues of lambda n equals 2n to the pi squared plus l squared all over 4L squared, where n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. And eigenfunctions in the form of yn equals e to the half x sine n pi over 2 x again with n equals 1, 2, 3 onwards. Okay, there we go, hopefully that's helpful.